So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Vinicius Santana. Uh, I'm a postdoc at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And today I'll be talking about uh, process simulator.jl, a differentiable uh, chemical process simulator. So, as a chemical engineer, I'll be talking about uh, chemical process engineering, of course. So, yes, my name is just like the Real Madrid player, Vinicius, Vinny Jr. So, a lot of people ask this question. So since we are in the Philips Stadium, I thought it to be relevant to say this. So, um, so before starting actually about what we are proposing, it's always a good idea to say a few words about the past, because every time we have an idea, we think that we are the only one having this idea. This is uh, definitely not true most of the time. So people in the past, in the 50s, they started doing a process simulation. So of course, they were most cared about uh, steady state simulation, because you know, they only cared about dynamic systems in the case they had to shut down or start up the plant. And then the 70s, the Aspen project at MIT marked an important part of chemical process engineering and simulation, actually, that led to uh, the very, very popular Aspen company and their products. And then uh, in the 90s, people started to begin, uh, you know, they, they started caring about dynamic simulation, first because um, <clears throat> they went out of uh, large-scale production of commodities to more uh, specialty project, uh, products, which require semi-continuous operation. And then, of course, a lot of comp uh, some companies appeared to cover this uh, this uh, need of the chemical industry. So, for instance, the Speed Up project, which uh, then evolved to GPROMs in Imperial College, is very good at doing dynamic simulation for chemical processes. And also in the 90s, there was this Diva that uh, you know raised in uh, University of Stuttgart, and then EMSO, which is uh, also a dynamic simulator that appeared in Brazil. So. Uh, while some of these um, uh, software became commercial products, when you go to the open source software uh, side of chemical process simulation, the story is not that, you know, happy. So, in 2008, uh, we have the WCN, we're very focused on steady state simulation. So, the developer is Daniel Wagner, and he named the simulator with the, his initial, which is amazing. And then, 2016, we have also the IDAS project, which is very nice, supporting uh, also, steady state flow sheet simulation. So they say they can do dynamics, but uh, yeah, there's no single example in the documentation about, about dynamics. And then in 2019, there was an E14 in Open Modelica. So uh, named OM Chem Sim to do um, also chem process, uh, chemical process simulation uh, in Open Modelica. So they have a very nice support for dynamic systems as the whole Modelica ecosystem has. But uh, there was very minimal support for thermodynamic calculations. So that uh, leaves the question, what's coming next in terms of open source, if any, anything is coming, but then the, the goal of this talk is to show that, okay, we can do something with what we have in Unity right now. Well, why would, you, we, why would you choose CIML to build the open source chemical uh, process simulator? So we have the, these nice declarative symbolic modeling language, mtk.jl, that makes it easy going from math to symbolic representation and later to a numeric implementation of uh, chemical engineering models. So we have these nice our causal component-based modeling where we can uh, just uh, compose our, uh, our process unit operations into a flow sheet. And also one of the mo most important parts of chemical engineering simulation is the uh, physical chemical property prediction, which uh, Clay from Dodge AL has been doing a great job in implementing state-of-the-art equation of states uh, for uh, chemical engineering. Of course, as I'm mentioning, one need of the, the, the current uh, chemical engineering industry is the, the need of uh, dynamic simulation. So in this sense, we have we can count on differential equations.jl, which has a lot of uh, very um, high performance implementations of ODE and DAE solvers. So now I'm gonna jump to uh, show some things. Well, so I, I, I made a critic about uh, dynamic simulation in the past that they only used to start up simulation and I'll be showing a demo about uh, the startup of a reactor. <laughs> so I'm assuming no isothermal uh, um, reaction with a cooling jacket. And also we are assuming also flow driven simulation. We assume that uh, we can perfectly control the inlet and outlet flows uh, in the simulation. Well, the synthesis is water, propylene oxide leading to propylene glycol, which is a very important chemical product. Well, this is typically what we, uh, rep how we represent a CSTR, continuous starter tank reactor. So we have water and two reactants, water and propylene oxide. We have some uh, solvent leading to our, our product and some um, remaining reactants in the reactive mixture. 
Well, uh, the dynamics of this system is quite simple, mass balance and uh, energy balance. The whole, a lot of, sci a lot of uh, time in the fort in chemical engineering is spent actually in this piece here, which is equation of state. But people, when they're doing dynamic simulations of the system, they say, hey, let's ignore this and simplify the, uh, the properties, and then uh, we, can do, uh, we can only focus on the dynamic part. It turns out that uh, a lot of science goes into this, but when people are going to do dynamic simulation, they just say, hey, you know what, uh, I'm not going to care about this. So to simulate this, uh, we're going to need a material source object which pro with properties calculated with Claypron, and also a CSTR object, and also with uh, inside of it, we have a kinetic reaction object. So. The material source object, if any of you had the, the opportunity to use Aspen or any flow sheet simulation, is basically you define a stream, you specify which, what substance you're using, pressure, temperature, composition, and flow rate, and then you get a lot of calculations to specify entropy, entropy, a lot of free energy, uh, Gibbs free energy, Helmholtz free energy, uh, gas, ma uh, gas phase fraction, a lot of properties. So we're also doing the same here, using a Clayperon implementations of equation of state. Well, so we have a system with a lot of polar substances, so we have to use an equation of state that support polar substances. So polar PC soft is one of those. Well, here I'm just instantiating a Claypro model. I'm specifying the substances, I'm loading some properties, and then I can instantiate my PC soft model with water, methanol, propylene, glycol, which is the product, and uh, this is propylene oxide, another name for it. So, the material source goes as, um, so I can specify the substances, I specify the thermodynamic model, the pressure, the temperature, uh, the molar flow rate, and also the composition, and then uh, modeling toolkit generates a bunch of equations calculating any other property derived from these uh, pressure, temperature, and composition. Then we can go to the CSTR object, so we can build a kinetic reaction. So we have a simple first order reaction. We assume that the kinetics is controlled by the concentration of propylene oxide. We can specify a bunch of properties. So that's the pre-exponential factor. This is the activation energy. This is the um, stoichi stoichiometric coefficients. Uh, this is the exponent that goes in the parallel of uh, kinetic reaction. So then we can build the CSTR object. We specify the substances, the phase at which the reaction happens. That's important. So we only have one inlet stream, so that's why we're specifying just one inlet port. And we're giving some gases the concentration at t equals zero. That's important as well. So then I'm connecting the source object with the reactor, reactor object using the connect command from modeling toolkit. And then I can build the system and then name it my connector. And then you can see that uh, we have a well-posed problem with the same number of equations as anodes, which is important. And then we can simplify the system by calling structural simplify that goes from uh, 194 equations to, I don't know, 12. So five differential and six algebraic. And then we can do some analysis. Oh, sorry. Okay, we have to specify initial condition. So basically assume that the tank is full of water and we have some propylene oxide, which is one of the reactants. And then we can solve the differential algebraic system of equations using uh, one of the solvers that differential equations.jl have. And then we can uh, do some analysis. Well, in the startup, the temp temperature reaches about 360 Kelvin which is something that someone carrying out the startup policy for the reactor should, should be concerned about. Otherwise, you can uh, end up in a very dangerous situation if you don't know what happens when you start up the simulation. And then we can also plot the concentration of our substances over time. So we have the limiting reactant that goes up and then drop about to zero. It's being consumed, which is nice. And we have our product being produced and then reaching a plateau of about 2.5 kilomoles per cubic meter. Yeah, that's the phase plane and other analysis we can do. I mean, we can do, we can go all over the day plotting uh, the, the properties we calculated with it. So with this, I end up my talking. Uh, I have no more time. <laughs> so thank you for your attention.
anyone has um, questions? I think Ken Kanye is not interesting. <laughs> Thank you for your talk. Um, I saw a lot of uh, numbers in the presentation, but they didn't have uh, units from Unitful or one of the other packages. Is it possible to combine, to use those uh, units from Julia? Yeah, I think that's one of the things we want to do as well, because in engineering, that's, uh, it's, it's very easy to make mistakes in the units, so having this way of checking those is uh, something we want to include it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>